hey, it's me. T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet. Well, some things are happening. Put my glasses on. I don't know. Well, these are these are these are looking glasses, not reading glasses. Anyway, I'm making a. It's not really a uh, what do you call that? It's not really a smoothie. It's a mini smoothie or something like that. See, because you know I got the, uh, you know the uh, buffered vitamin C, and I got what I did is I took some real cherries. You can't see it. Some real cherries. Well, you know cherries, and I pit, uh, I pitted them, took the pits out, right? So I got this little couple of uh, cherries in it, right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to if I can find it. I'm going to now. I put the cherries in here, but then I got this kiwi fruit that's not, they seem to be almost ready. Should I put a kiwi fruit in there? I think not, because my vitamin C will come from, you know, the vitamin C, what do you call that? Put a half a thing in there. The vitamin C powder. You need the vitamin C. Because we're in a pandemic. And so you want to, uh, in a pandemic, or any kind of. Look, in anything, if you get the pandemic, in anything, what you really want to do is you want to boost, you want to make yourself strong inside so that no matter what happens outside, then this, I got this coconut cultured yogurt, whatever it is. And then it, anyway, with the pandemic, what you really want to do, I just put one teaspoon in, I don't know what that's going to be like. This is like a yogurt. It's like uh, it's got the, the the good gut gut bacteria and stuff like that. See things like that. Hey, put it this way: now that you're in a pandemic and you and you're locked down and they won't let you, it's not strange. They say you can't go to work, but yet and still they won't pay you for not going to work. You know what I mean? If they're going to kick you out of work, then shouldn't they supplement because you? No, I'm going to get to that. That's another. That's for another thing. Anyway, it's like a coconut yogurt, plant based yogurt, very tart. I sort of like it. Uh, what, 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 oh, oh! Then now I have a choice. I don't really have a choice. I got this almond cashew drink. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that as a liquid part of this smoothie. So I use the. Uh, it's a macadamia nut beverage, unsweetened almond cashew cashew and macadamia nut beverage so it's, a, it's a, that's what it is it's an unsweetened thingy thing this what it said but um and this is the little top that goes on it like that uh the thing is over here I'll leave that alone that's not what I'm going to talk to you about look some things are brewing this is just fascinating to me. I'm sort of, you know, no, I don't like the lockdown. I don't like the people going through all kinds of trauma that they're going through. I don't actually like that not being with my wife. That's not the point. Um, but as you may or may not know, I told this story before. Right before I came, I started living in Alice. In, uh, I've been in South Africa since 2000, but not right now. Right now, I'm, undis I'm at an undisclosed location in North America. Uh, but I live in South Africa. Anyway, um, somewhere in 2013, somewhere around in there, I, uh, I I went to uh, to Alice, and well, I moved to Alice in, in 2014. Alice is a, is a area anyway. I, I live in a village right now. Right now, worse than that. Anyway, I live in a village right now. But here's the thing: right before I moved, I was house sitting, if you want to call it that, um, for uh, for a friend of mine, uh, you know, South African friend of mine. Uh, uh, anyway, he had a lot of books. I like the house sit when you got a lot of books. Like here, I got a lot of books here, but I got bookstores, I got libraries here. But anyway. I mean, this is South Africa. Everything's saying this is South Africa. They don't really have a book culture, but this cat had a lot of books. In fact, this is where I read um, uh, uh, I.F. Uh, Stone's The Hidden History of the Korean War. I think it is. That's a great book. Ooh, if you can get that. If I have one record, no, okay. Okay. But one of the things I did was uh, he had Barack Obama's um, um, book, that book. He had the Barack Obama, the audio book of Barack Obama, uh, doing uh, what's the the political one, uh, Audacity of Hope. Okay, because he's got the he got the father and my my father and then you know my, whatever it is you know because you know because you know he's got a he had a like a, a, a rich m m grandmother and a you know the you know the white side of his family and then the, and then the African side of his family has got whatever they got. And so he wrote the book 
politically politically talking about America. Okay, because he, he basically he grew up in, in Hawaii, if you want to call it American. No diss on Hawaii. I, love, I can't say I love Hawaii. I've never been there. I don't care. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and and so no diss on Hawaii, right? And, and, and no diss on, you know, Kenya, whatever have you. But, you know, and no diss on Indonesia because he grew up really in Indonesia. Formative. You know, there's this thing with, um, with, with the blues people. I learned this from this blues guy. Uh, uh, I talked to this guy. I forget what his name is. Let's call him Carolina Slim. Let's just say he's Carolina Slim. And so I, I, you know, I was I was recording at the time. I record a lot. It doesn't matter. I was recording at the time. So I was talking to him, you know, because when I record, I also record artists. I also take time and I try to interview him a little. Blah blah blah. blah. I said, "How can they call you Caroline Steve? You live in Long Island. <laughs> You've been living Long Island for how long? You live? He said like twenty years, thirty years, whatever it was, like thirty years, something like that. And he he said because I was made in North Carolina, where where was South Carolina, where it was. And I said, that's very interesting. Because then I thought about it. Hey, I was made in the South Bronx. doesn't matter where I was born in the South Bronx. But I mean, where your formative years is, where you had your first fight, that's where you were made, okay? So if you wasn't made in the black community, then you don't know what they're going through. But you, but if you was made in Hawaii and made in Indonesia and made in, you know, uh, with Harvard, or well, Columbia and Harvard, and well, then you have a certain trajectory. You know, you know certain things. Anyway, that's not the point. So I'm reading this book. I'm not reading. I, I, I took the, the audio book because it won a Grammy Award. I said, "Hey, Barack Obama, going to talk to me." I, I like people. I don't, I don't read. I don't do a lot of um, uh, books on tape, but I should do more because I like people reading to me. Anyway. So I'm, li I'm, I'm li listening to it, and I swear, look, usually when I start to read a book, I don't, you know, I just read it, you know what I mean? But I, I, I defy you to go past so many, you know, minutes of listening to this thing and then realizing, wait a second, everything this cat said, everything, he done won against. He went against his own principles that he wrote down. Look, it's something to say something. And not have witnesses or have something, and maybe not have a record. But it's something to actually write something down. And then, wait, not only did you write it down, but you have to record it sometime. Now. You have to actually record the words you wrote down. So basically, it came through your brain. You wrote it down, right? That's another thing, right? You did all the editing right there. Then you had to read it. So, so that gives you another opportunity to see what, what, what you said. I, again, I defy anyone. Forget, forget, don't forget the library book. Get the book on tape. And start listening to his dulcet tones. And listen to what he's saying. Everything he said, he don't want against. Every okay. So I call I call um see in, in, in Africa there's a thing called uh well I guess other places called snake in the grass. You know what I mean? Snake in the grass is slick, you know what I mean? I call Barack Obama, Barack Hussein Obama a snake in the grass. And if and what's gonna happen right now, because of all the stuff, especially with Joe Biden and all the rest of the stuff, all the stuff that, that Barack Obama done, done wrong, or done wrong, done, done, done against his own principles, against the principles of humanity, is coming out right now. And it's it is interesting to watch, you know? And but really but really and you know, but really upset me, you might say, Well, you guess you're so vehemently against Barack Obama. Man. When I think about it, see, I'm I'm like a, I don't know, I'm a, I'm one of those uh, internationalist hotel brothers, you know, you know, blah 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 blah. Politically, I'm ADOS, but you know, everything else in me is about humanity and it's about you know liberation and blah 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 blah. All the rest of that stuff. That's how I grew up. But if you read, if you listen to this thing, and I defy you again to 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 to, to try to go past this, and understand, and then when you have the understanding. That this is the man that allowed, I'm not going to say that, he allowed this predatory white woman, Hillary Clinton, to kill an African leader who was talking to not just African heads of state. He, the African leader was also talking to village chiefs. You don't understand how important that is. To chiefs. He had a he had a, he had a miracle. In, 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 he was had an aquifer that was re that, that was reforestating the desert. They didn't kill him for no oil. They didn't kill him for no gold. They because he was going to make the desert once again what it was before, a place that can give out food and nourishment and minerals and blah 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 blah. 
and Barack Obama allowed Hillary Clinton to kill him and cackle, cackle laugh about his killing, killed an African leader. Did the Pan-African people do nothing? No, they, they do nothing. This man, bro, he is the he is the most vile snake in the grass, snake in snake in the grass oil salesman <laughs> there ever was. So forgive me. You say, well, you're you're a black man. No, I'm a dos, and we ain't taking it no more. Some people got to go, right? So he gonna go, I suppose, sooner or later. You know what I mean? But all the stuff, stuff that's coming out, the, the world has changed. Not only, I mean, I'm going off now, but let me not go off. Things are changing rapidly. And to tell you the truth, I'm sort of quarantined. I do have a laptop here. I don't deal with laptops. I have a TV here, but I don't, there's no news. And of course, I got the internet. And I'm just laying back, you know, uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm, I'm, some, I'm sort of in a, a period right now, but hopefully right about July, I'm going to start writing again. But man, I'm charging my batteries, trying to get healthier, right? So should you.